Hello, today's Wednesday, October 18th. Um, my name is Reverend Dr. Megan Scannon. I'm Executive Director of Churches for Middle East Peace. I'm afraid that I got my dates mixed up yesterday or my number of days. Today is day 12 we're between Hamas and Israel. Apologies, I'm at the airport and traveling. I'm just finishing up a few days in Boston where if you've been paying attention to the conversation at some of the academic universities here, one of which uh, I spoke at just today, um, the conversation in the United States is one where we can't speak freely and where um, people are being silenced and where there's a lot of hatred on all sides and where we're not having honest conversations about what's happening on the ground. And so my hope and my prayer is that we can talk about the way that people are being hurt and harmed and the way that violence is continuing every day. I spent a lot of time last night texting. Uh, I heard back from my contact um, from Catholic Relief Services, who uh, is in touch with the head of the Ali Anglican Hospital. And um, the people in Gaza are just desperate. Um, they are begging for intervention. Um, they are calling what's happening uh, ethnic cleansing. They are worried about genocide. And... Um, and that the world is playing politics. So I want to update you on some things um, that happened. I'm sure you saw President Biden uh, was in Israel today. He met with President Netanyahu and Israel's war cabinet. Um, he met with President Herzog, survivors of the Hamas massacres, and first responders. I have not heard any reports that he has met with any Palestinians. Um, Biden is asking Congress for an unprecedented support package for Israel. Um, we don't know the details for that. You're probably aware that the U.S. always already, because of the Obama administration, sends more than three million, three billion dollars per year to Israel uh, in a military aid package. Biden also pledged 100 million for humanitarian aid for Palestinians. One of our biggest concerns is the water, electricity, and gas that has been turned off in Gaza. We have not received word that water is getting to those who've been displaced in South Gaza. Israel has said they won't thwart deliveries of humanitarian aid from Egypt uh, through the Rafah checkpoint and crossing. Um, Bridges from Middle East Peace uh, myself and our board had a meeting with the Egyptian ambassador to the United States today, and he let us know um, Egypt's perspective. Um, what we heard articulated is that unless there is a humanitarian ceasefire, it is not safe for humanitarian workers to bring aid uh, to Palestinians in Gaza. The United States just today vetoed a resolution at the UN Security Council calling for a humanitarian pause, calling for a humanitarian ceasefire. So one of the things we're asking for our constituents is not only prayer, but we're asking for you to please contact your elected officials and call for a ceasefire, call for an end to this war. In response to the Ali hospital attack that we talked about yesterday, you should read our statement. Um, it is unknown who perpetrated the attack. Palestinians on the ground are saying that they had warnings uh, from Israel, that it was an Israeli attack. Um, the West, Israel and the United States uh, are saying that it was one of the militant uh, groups um, and that it was not Israel. Uh, President Biden said today that it was by the other team, uh, which was more than inappropriate. And um, we said that today in a meeting with Israeli officials. Anyway, um, riots took place outside of um, Israeli and US embassies in Jordan, Turkey, and Lebanon over claims of Israelis' involvement in the Gaza hospital blast. A synagogue in Berlin was firebombed. Please speak out against anti-Semitism and rising Islamophobia. Um, in our country, around the world, we can call for an end to the war. We can advocate for an end to the occupation of the Palestinian people, and we must. Um, the situation is absolutely desperate. But in our goal of ending violence, may we not encourage more violence. Um, I'm deeply, deeply discouraged by the American government's response. I think President Biden's flippancy in his meetings in Israel, um, I think his rhetoric uh, continuing to talk about our unadulterated support, our military support, 
uh, one of the things that we are hearing from other governments, which would be the position of churches for Middle East peace, is that Israel's response is beyond disproportionate and that it's devastating impact on civilians um, is illegal according to international law and according to you know, rules of war and um, the Geneva Conventions. Um, as a result of the attack on the hospital yesterday, a number of the heads of state of other Middle East countries canceled their meetings uh, with President Biden, including Abbas of the Palestinian Authority. Um, Biden did not also meet with the head of state of Egypt or King Abdullah of Jordan. We do also know things are escalating at the north border in Israel uh, with Hezbollah, and so we're paying close attention to that. The death tolls um, continue to be uh, more than 1,300 people in Israel have died. The death toll of Palestinians is more than 3,500 Palestinians. We would encourage you to join us for our Wednesday prayer gatherings, and tomorrow we'll do a briefing, which I would imagine would be somewhat similar to what I shared tonight. Um, as the briefing will be sometime tomorrow morning on Thursday, October 19th. We'll continue to keep you informed or do our best. We'll continue to pray, uh, but we also want to talk in our church communities about working against hatred, working against false binaries, but also calling for an end to the war. That is not a popular message, and so um, I hope the churches will lead the way.